notice come up. There we go. Okay, good morning to everyone. I'm Tony Spencer. And I want to thank Leo and Desiree for hosting this and thank Leo, uh, Leo for his backup. Um, has everyone had an opportunity to look over the agenda? Are there any corrections or questions or comments before we move forward? No. Okay. I know that we uh, have not formally introduced public comments and all that, uh, but if anyone on that would like something um, before we get started, uh, please do it. You have two minutes. Uh, 30 seconds, 15 seconds before it's time to end, I will let, let you know. Or well, Desiree, would you let them know, please, since you have the... Sure. And we, we actually had, do you mind if we if we hold off on the public comments just for now? We, we were going to jump into some reminders first and then open it for public comment, if that's okay? So saying that, Desiree, I want to turn this over to Patrick and you uh, okay. to go over. Okay. Um, Patrick, do you mind sharing your screen because my my um, slides sure. are frozen again? Sure. All right. Okay. Yeah. Give me one second. I'm having technical difficulties this morning. As does happen. Okay. All right. Can you all see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Desiree, just tell me when to move to the next screen. Okay. Okay. All right, so good morning, everyone. Welcome to, as Tony said, our Region 7 SAC meeting. Um, you can go to the next slide. So um, just as we get started, just wanted to remind everyone, um, just a few Zoom reminders. We are we have the chat open, but um, for members of the public who have joined us, just note that the chat is not monitored during the meeting, but comments will be made, or comments that are made will be recorded. Um, also, this meeting is being recorded itself. Um, next slide. Gosh, my notes are frozen too. Okay, so just to quickly go over the agenda, we'll go over a. a We'll start off with some quick reminders um, and open the meeting, obviously, for co um, public comment. And we will continue on to our old business of approving the February 22nd meeting notes, uh, finalizing the SAC charter language, and finishing off our virtual driving tour from the February 22nd meeting. Um, after wrapping up the driving tour, we will um, go over the public involvement plan that you all should have received in an email last Friday, um, which includes a detailed meeting schedule for this region plan process. Um, and then lastly, we'll go over some upcoming meetings and outreach tools that we currently have live right now. So real quick, um, just wanted to, before we jump in, go over a few reminders for the purpose of this region plan process and the mission of the SAC. So again, um, the purpose of the region plan process is to outline a regional vision for the future on a 20 year horizon as it relates to land use. Um, this also presents an opportunity to take the goals, policies and strategies from plan 2040 on a countywide level and see how we can implement those um, for region seven. So the hope is that we'll get a better understanding of the regional growth and where to accommodate such growth and where to prioritize our investments in the community. Um, so this process also provides us a chance to sort of fine tune the plan land use map for from plan 2040 and develop recommendations for zoning in this region. So your mission as the SAC is to help connect us county staff to a range of voices in the community, um, make sure that the collective vision for the future of the region is reflecting all voices of the community. And um, also just to advise us as staff on the preparation of the goals and policies and future land use and zoning in region seven. And then lastly, to ultimately support the region plan through the legislative process. All right, next slide. So, um, our last reminder is just to quickly show where we are in the planning phase. Um, we're currently in phase two in community planning. Um, we have now closed the community questionnaire that was open on the hub site and replaced it with a feedback map that will be open through June 9th. 
Um, we have also announced a community forum on April 20th, which we will give more details on later in this presentation. And we are kicking off our topical work workshops with you all, um, starting with our economy and public facilities meeting um, in April. We also have a public visioning workshop tentatively scheduled in October. So we'll get into more of these dates in the public um, um, plan that we're going over um, later in the presentation. Okay, so next slide. Now I will hand it back to you, Tony, for public comment. And if you all pardon me, uh, well, can Desiree, can you see if anybody from the audience has their hand raised Let's for see. public comments? I can't see that right now. I don't see anyone. Oh, and we have Troy here. Let me promote him to. I don't see anyone raising their hand. Okay. And that's a good indication of for me that they want this request for public comment. I'm going to give you one last chance. If anyone has anything for public comment, uh, this is the time to do it. You have a maximum of two minutes. If it's longer than that, you have the opportunity to pass it on to Desiree and Patrick, and they will ensure that the rest of the committee sees it. Um, 30 seconds before your time is up, I would, Desiree will give you notice, and then 15, and then five. And we will stick to the uh, time frame because of everyone's schedule. And so I want to thank you for your participation up front. So at this point, I don't see any hands for public comment. Okay. So please. We will carry on then, I think, to our old business. And actually the first um, agenda item on that is the approval of the meeting notes. So Tony, if you'd like to, um, you can go to the next slide, Patrick, we have. Yes. Yeah, and hopefully everybody had a chance to look at those meeting notes. And I think, um, Tony, if we could maybe have a little bit of a formal process with a motion oh. and second and all in favor. Okay, so do we have a motion to approve the minutes from February 22nd? So moved. Is there a second? Second. 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 Okay. Um, do we have any concerns? With that being said, minutes have been approved, first and seconded, an opportunity to uh, respond to that. Anyone who do not wish to vote yay or nay can recuse, not recuse, uh, they, darn it, what's the word? <laughs> abstain. If you say, you know, I just want to abstain from this, for whatever your reasons are, you don't have to give them to us, but that's the process. So if there's no, the yay seem to have it, there's no disapproval, no abstentions. So the eyes have it. Thank you. I'm sorry, Tony, how are we voting? You vote yay or nay, and Where? then by just your chat, you can raise your hand. You can in the chat. I'm asking now if anyone has, this is a, Zoom is very unusual. And so the way I do it, I'm part of it in our church. If there are no, if anyone approves, just stay silent. If you have a, a want to say no, raise your hand and say it. If you have any abstentions, meaning you're not going to vote yes or no, then that's important for us to know for the record. You know, I, I hate to say this, but I, I think that maybe we should actually just raise our hands or do something to signal that we're listening and paying attention and approving it or something. That's but fine. Silence doesn't really mean anything, right? Silence, well, silence can mean yes if no one makes any comment. But raising our hands is fine. I have no problem with that, too. Uh, raising our hands says yes. So if you want to do it that way, thank you for your comment. And I like the uh, suggestion as well. So all in favor, show their hand. Yes. Any those? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Thank you for your vote. Desiree? Okay. We can go to the next slide. Okay, so Thank you again to Priscilla for incorporating comments regarding um, representing constituents and allowing for an alternate proposal if consensus is not reached. Um, 
just to throw up some of the text that um, were was modified, the red text represents the changes that Priscilla su suggested from the previous iteration of the charter language. So um, the, ch the, the title has been changed from reaching consensus to decision making. And then we've added some, um, just a, a couple you know, sentences here that reflect um, representing the interests of their constituency. Um, if a member is unable to support a proposal, they encourage to have an alternate proposal um, and at the end, alter alternate proposals may be forwarded with the primary recommendation when consensus is not reached. So Priscilla, do you want to add anything to that? Or are we, um, does anyone else have anything else to add at this point? The only thing I would say is that there are several paragraphs after this that could in fact just be deleted. And I thought we were going to replace a lot of that stuff with this verbiage. But I, I don't, um, you know, at this point, okay. <laughs> I don't want to spend that much time on the charter. Yeah. Um, Patrick, did we decide to strike those paragraphs? What, where did we um, land with that? I tell you what, let me stop sharing my screen for a minute. I'd like to pull that up and and take a look if if I could. Um, and I can share that with you all so that everybody can see what, what we're talking about. There was a whole nother page after with all the things mm -hmm. about if and then and so on. And I thought we were replacing it with this more simple language. Okay, I've got it up here. Let me share with everybody. All right, can everybody see the, this is the draft charter as it, as it stands now. And so here are the changes that we just reflected. And then, so it was this items, these items one through seven that you're referring to Priscilla, correct? Can you all see that well enough? And I think, um, I think what, I think what I had um, eliminated was all of the duplicative language when we pulled out the language, the paragraph um, above that was specifically from plan 2040. Some of that would have been repeated in, in this list one through seven or eight. And I, I, so I deleted, yeah, I deleted those, um, those items that would have been dupl duplicative and then if we want to remove these remaining seven, um, they, they are a bit different, just adding a little bit more detail. But if you all feel like they're not necessary, we can delete them. And I'm happy to go either way. It doesn't make any difference to me. Does anybody else have a preference? I think it's okay to leave them in myself. Okay. Okay. Um, and Patrick, I had one more that, um, and my apologies for not um, that's okay. sending this to the group. It's just, I wanted to discuss it. When we talk mm -hmm. about the guiding principles on page two, we talk Everybody about- still see my screen? Yep, right here. Yeah, so we talk about inclusivity, uh, respect, health, environmental protection, equity. And I just was wondering, this is for the group to decide if it should say something about, um, economic vitality and that says we're looking for ways to support um, continued economic vitality in the region. And I say that because we have environmental protection, which is so important, but also, you know, part of this process is to make sure that the community can sustain itself and support some, you know, uh, the economy as well. So, Leah, it's something like what I just input here, economic vitality. The plan will seek ways to support economic vitality in the region. You know, that would work for me perfectly. That sounds good. How do others feel about that? Thumbs up? 
Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. And, and I want to make sure we're covering it completely. Does anyone think this is inappropriate to put in here? Or, and if so, you know, maybe we should talk about that. No, Lee, I think it's a great, great point. You know, the, the work has to be economically sustainable and fundable and financeable. If not, nothing's going to happen. We, we have to be realistic about the financing markets, the credit markets, and what can be done and what can't be done. And well, my my target was more about supporting um, opportunities for um, businesses too, because yeah, all oh, that's part of this. But yeah, I agree. And I think this language does cover that. So good addition. Great. So I have a question, if I may. Um, I, I noticed through a lot of the comments on the interactive mapping and everything, there's a lot uh, of commentary about mobility. Uh, either roadways or bike paths and so on. And I'm not sure that that's covered in those guiding principles if we're gonna be adding like economic vitality, do you see mobility as a uh, something in this area or, um, or no? I think it shows up in another area of, of the goals. Um, maybe not a guiding principle, but I think there's parts in here about mobility. Okay. Um, and if I could, to what Leo just said, and to complement what I think we're just saying, um, if you have an asterisk on something to guide it back to something that's already said, that may be something that could help uh, both to Patrick and Desiree. Uh, you have the factors in your hand, but I'm just saying to everyone that would be a way to understand it's not being said for the first time in just this one place. And the highlighted, I don't know whether Patrick or Desiree just highlighted that, but under health, absolutely, you could add mobility something about um, accessible. Yeah, increasing opportunities to, um, we could even change that to increasing opportunities uh, for, a, a, for something to the effect of all mobility options. Um, We're just improving mobility. How would you all feel about that improving mobility, changing changing this to improving mobility. Would that get at it, Linda? And or, or maybe mobility um, alternatives or alternatives to, I, I don't know. Yeah. Walking and biking, certainly, but I was also looking where, you know, uh, if we're looking at reducing corridors to, to add that, then we are impacting traffic. So that mm -hmm. was one of the things that I was looking at. So thank you. If so, that's okay with everybody. We also have public transportation too. Mm -hmm. So I think mobility is a good word. I don't like eliminating walk and bike. I would rather add some verbiage okay. about mobility. Um, well, mobility. Let's, go back to, let's go back to what you had there for just a minute. Um, it was mo mobility and you could say including walk and bike. Yeah. Thank you, Leo. That, that, sounds, that sounds good. Everyone pleased with that? Thank you. It, is that also addressing accessibility? Opportunities, I think, I, I would read it as accessibility. Because I, I just noticed it. I mean, that seems, I mean, we're not spelling out anything about people with disabilities, um, you know, wheelchairs and all that. And unfortunately, because Annapolis area, the whole county, all of this is so old, so much of it is not um, accessible to people with disabilities. I will add though, having worked in the city and been in the fire marshal's office, it seems to do the curves and the bathrooms, where it is possible where people are renovating, that seems to be a point of including uh, those factors. If someone wants to have a certain location for the public and it's 50 people or more or more than 50, uh, they have to do certain things to change that building. So along with your pull bars and your bathrooms, uh, the door widths, things like that. And so um, it's good to still bring it up, but these being new, tell me Priscilla, have you, what, what is your experience in the county? I'm, I'm talking about the city. And I'm not just talking about um, in one's home or in a public bathroom. I'm talking about being able to get into a restaurant. 
I am. There, there are many restaurants that are totally inaccessible to people with disabilities. Yes, I'm, I'm still talking about that from this, from a farm washer's standpoint, I'm usually talking about businesses. Homes is, is a different story, but we are talking about public access. Right. So, so if we're talking about parks and we're talking about um, buildings, I mean, I, I'm just saying, I think as we think about our guiding principles over the next 20 years, one of the things that we would like, and you know, one of the groups that I'm very involved with is AARP, we would love to see this become one of those healthy aging communities. And if we're going to do that, we're going to have to address um, people with disabilities and how to make it more mobile for them. And so, so having said that, could there be a statement along with what we're saying already on what you're suggesting to say as, as, change, as changes are necessary or required that we will adapt? Because right now we see all the dis disabilities that may, may uh, have come before us. So we have something in there to make sure it's inclusivity, but also looking towards the future of things that we are not seeing right now. That making sense? Well, yes, but I don't like the word waiting until it's required because I'd like to see us be proactive rather than reactive. As Honest, I understand. I'm not saying, okay, I don't want to make this more difficult than it has to be. I'm well, saying we have to look ahead, and I already said that. So we have to look ahead. So I'm just saying the verbiage, we can play around with the verbiage, but I'm saying that we should have something and it's saying that we are looking ahead along with what we're doing. You can't see everything as, as much as we are talking right now to see and say and do the right thing. You cannot see everything. So we need a statement in there that would complement what I'm saying to make sure that we are continually being inclusive and looking for ways to accommodate. How about um, for all people, including those with disabilities? That sounds good, Leo. Does that does that cover it? I mean, it, it might be a little clumsy, but it's in there, which I think is a good. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I see a hand for somebody. Uh, it's, it's, that was me. Sorry. Okay. All I'm saying is that yeah, it's good for now, but we cannot address everything that's going to happen. We need to have a statement that says that and recognize that we will still be looking for ways to accommodate. And if, if that's clumsily said, well, I think you should get the meaning on that. So what I'm hearing is that you're you're suggesting that we have something that indicates that we want to be visionary in our approach. Is yes. And I hear that in both Priscilla and what Leo just said. I was just trying to meet the concern for what we were what we're not seeing right now. I wonder if some overarching statement, like a, an intro sentence under, you know, guiding principles, um, uh, the, the, the following, you know, the, the, the planning effort will um, incorporate the following in a, in a visionary manner, something more elegant than that. But I mean, are, we, way to deal with are we really trying to take the 2040 plan and make it come alive through these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that really what our, our, our kind of overarching objective is? So some of the visioning is already in that 2040 and we're wanting to help to kind of make it rich and, and make, it, make it happen. And these are some of the guiding principles to do that. I think all of our intents are the same, just as how it's said, I think it's what uh, it comes down to. The word visionary to me is, uh, is, is doing just that. I was just trying to make it clear that we can't always see everything. So I think visionary speaks to what, what 2040 is about. Thank um, you, Barry. So, so do, do we have a suggestion for some for, for how to incorporate that here? You know, maybe we need to think about it and bring it back next time. If there's somebody that wants to draft some language, because I think that that's going to take some playing around with it. Maybe. What does it, what, I mean, is there, what's missing? What I'm trying to, what does that add 
that we don't already have? What's, what's missing? I guess that's what I'm saying. We, we can talk about it, think about it, but what else is needed? The point of my suggestion is that you can't see everything that is needed. We're doing what we can. I'm agreeing with what, what you both, what you have said. We could just I'm, put something in there like, um, you know, the following guiding principles seek to implement the visionary plan of 2040. That hits Tony's idea of getting the word visionary. And then Larry, like Larry's pointed out, we are here just to implement the yeah. 2040 plan. So then it kind of. That works. That works. I like that. I like it a lot. That's good. Just what you said. Um, was it visionary principles or something else? It was a visionary 2040 plan, more or less. Does that work? Okay. So does does this generally then um, is this something that we can say that there's consensus that we should move forward with this this as the the charter language for everybody to sign and and work yes. with. Okay. I'll take it for it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm wondering about the health statement. I'm going to be brave and pop in here. The the access to regional or to recreational opportunities. Um, could we add and nature <laughs> reducing population or pollution? That's all good, I think. But if we could just, yeah, thank you. I don't know how you all feel about that. <coughs> We have a general thumbs up from from everybody. Show of thumbs. <laughs> um, I, I'm not opposed to it. It's just a little awkward. Um, well, I can access to nature and recreation opportunities. Yeah, that's fine. If you want access to um, to. I don't know. I mean, if it's yeah, you know, grammatically, you can figure it out. I, I do feel like there's a difference between, you know, recreational opportunities and just having the natural environment. <laughs> Thanks. Change the word recreation to recreational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I apologize. I can't be with you on screen today, everybody. Thanks for understanding. Well, we'll just tell you they put it in, but they really didn't. <laughs> so does this then look like a charter that that we can all live with and 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 sign on to with these additions it does to me it does, it does to, me. to me as well yes okay so thumbs up from Somebody was trying to say something and. Okay. All right, so I, th I think I think with with a show of thumbs up, we uh, we can consider this the the guiding charter. And so what we'll do is we'll um, accept all of these all of these changes and send this out for everyone to sign um, after this after we finish up this meeting and as we're sending out some of the next items. Um, Patrick, if you don't mind, just pull the period off the last one because I don't, I think all the bullets are without this. All right, there we go. Okay. All right, let me, give me one second to stop sharing and I'm gonna, 
go back to our, um, I think at this point, Desiree, you're going to hand it over to me anyway yep. to begin. Mm -hmm. All right. The, the, the next item on our agenda is we needed to finish our virtual driving tour that we, um, that we had started at our last meeting. So I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, we did get a couple of extra, um, extra submittals for this driving tour. I thought this was actually a very interesting and, and helpful discussion last time. And um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get everything minimized so I can see what I'm doing here. So, so continuing the discussion here, the, the idea was that uh, you all would, would send us images of places around the region with ideas for why you love it and it ought to be preserved, what is an issue in the region, and, and maybe the image is, is representative or it is the actual issue. So what um, things maybe need to be improved. And then areas for thinking toward the future. If this is a plan that we do look at a 20 year horizon, you know, what's missing and what, what could be um, needed in the future. So those you know, might be some areas that, um, that could transform over the next 20 years. So continuing with some of the things that were submitted, this is one that, um, Lily Openshaw had shared, and she can't be with us today. She's at a conference, but I will read what she what she sent. Um, this is from within the city uh, on West Street, and she said the urban center um, that the city has created it blocks sunlight and creates a dark and often dreary promenade. The city and the county are planning four more urban centers to in the Forest Drive corridor. How can we improve this? Um, other communities and Countries have development restrictions that account for natural light and design heights and setbacks. Um, how can we incorporate something similar uh, into our codes? And um, people that live behind some of these large city developments are upset because they've lost sunlight in their backyards. So can new developments do a better job of understanding and respecting surrounding older neighborhoods? And so this is near Westgate Circle on, on West, West Street. Um, and potential solutions that she noted are things like setback requirements, break, breaks in the building mass and different building orientation on the site. Um, she uh, had also submitted this um, image as well regarding bus stops. Now these are, these are actually in the city, but she's um, noted that this is a, a fix it. Um, that the county and the city need to work together to construct a decent transit and bus stop system, that the demand exists now, but it'll only increase as city uh, up zones and encourages further development. Um, if the plan is to rely on more public transportation, bus stops and transit stops need to be improved. And so this one in particular is on Bay Ridge um, Avenue across from Bay Ridge Garden Apartments. And if you know the area, there's a hardware store in this, and a vet in the building immediately behind here. Um, what potential solutions at a transit hub in the Southern Forest Drive district and inventory bus stops and ensure that they're accessible and more protected against the weather. Um, moving on, this, this is one that I wanted to, to talk to and then um, Troy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call on you a bit because you had submitted some images as well. This is the, the Bestgate Road area and there are several planned land use changes in this area that were, that were recommended during the plan 2040 process that would, um, that aligned some of, some of the properties that have already been developed with, with, with what was recently built. So an office building here, these sites um, on the north side of Bestgate, just for orientation, this is the very corner of the mall right here. So we're, we're um, sort of east of the, of the mall and Admiral Drive comes up to connect to Bestgate here, Admiral Drive Medical Parkway. Um, one of the areas, this 
much of this area between the mall and, and Medical Parkway was recommended in Plan 2040 to be included um, in, the, in the larger Parole Town Center. And in conversations with the, the, the property owners of this area, um, the Parole Town Center Master Plan actually recommended um, changing the planned land use on Gate Drive and, and Herndon Drive and actually reverting that back to a lower intensity planned land use as it was um, designated in the plan 24, in, um, I'm sorry, the 2009 general development plan. So, um, so, so plan 2040 had recommended town center land use for, for this whole area. Um, the subsequent uh, parole town center master plan recommends um, changing ha about half of that to, I think is a low medium density residential land use to, um, to recognize the, the homes that are in this area here. And just some images from Street View. This is the Gate Drive corridor. This is one of the, the new office buildings on the north side of, of Best Gate. And then Troy, you had submitted some images. I can't remember if you sent this to all of the, all of the I SAC don't, or not, but. I don't think so, but these pictures right here represent where I live at on Parker Drive, which mm -hmm. is right down the street from the Napa's Mall. I mean, right. As you can see, it's, I mean, years ago, we would consider a, a private road, but since then, uh, we, you know, we've been upgraded because now the one time trash trucks wouldn't come down to the individual houses. Uh, we still would like to see get our mailbox put in front of our houses right down the stairs still on Best Gate Road. But the issue is blacktop. I mean, um, recently we have submitted, uh, as a community submitted a, a bid to try to get um, uh, water and sewage. And we're in the process of a meeting with the county to try to get that set up. But for years, you know, we often wonder why we couldn't get a uh, proper, just proper blacktop, you know, what I was saying. Um, taxes and everything that we couldn't incorporate that. And then that's what we found out from the county that we would have to, you know, stick to the uh, mandate, which includes, I mean, the road would have to be a certain width, which involved front footage um, assessments for each property owner. Um, and we're in the midst of, of trying to work that out. But um, Tony had asked me to submit, because I was telling there's still even some communities that still have dirt roads and one of them is Parker Drive and the other one is Harrington Drive, which is right down the street from me. So I just wanted to show the committee, you know, that with all this development going on our best case, there are still some community and we're probably one of the few last, uh, you know, African-American um, communities that's still left on Best Gate Road that, and this is the way we are living in this day and age of 2022. So just wanted to bring that to the group. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, because how many other communities are there like that? Because that's very disappointing to see. Uh, it's us and uh, other communities, Harrison Drive. Harrison Drive is more, it's more of a, a business area. Um, but there are a few houses down the back of it that are properly owned, but that's also a, a, a dirt road. But Troy, do you have a sense for any of the areas of District 7 that are in the county that have a similar situation? Um, now I'm not sure as far as um, other than Best Gate Road area. I haven't. There used to be some further down, but um, what they recently, they built the, the church down there with one community that was uh, black, that was dirt road, but that's blacktop now. A lot of times what they do when, like when it was wide in Best Gate Road, the top portion of the community there were blacktop, but the rest of it they would leave as is. Um, and I don't know if that was a county code mandate for it to be done or, or what, but um, I don't know. Uh, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get involved with um, 
these planning committees and everything because a lot of times we were unaware of everything that was going on with the county and a lot of times by the time we do find out these things you know it's already too late to put our opinions or to vote on all these issues troy can i ask you um i see i was just looking on google maps here i see that the sign is still blue meaning it's a private road are you still is it still considered a private road or has uh, the county taken it over well, well i think it's still going to be right now it's uh, a private road. We are in the midst of putting them, uh, we got a committee together and we actually had a presentation from the county on what we need to do to get um, city and water sewage. We had tried to do this a few years back, but the mandate back then was that everybody would have to agree to sign up to the, uh, to the system. And we had, uh, it, we, we didn't, our vote wasn't consistent, so it was dropped. I uh, see. Recently, it's been brought up again because down the voting um, process is not by individual persons, by the number of lots on each person property. Uh, so, so we are in the midst of trying to <clears throat> do it again, and then we can see where it goes. Um, but one of the concerns was like the mailboxes. They are on Bestgate Road now, and it's fine during the summertime. But when we have uh, snow and stuff. And uh, uh, state highway trucks come to plow the road. A lot of times, the snow plows, they were beat up and knocked down those mailboxes. And, they, and we have to replace them every two or three years. Um, where so if they were, if we could move them back down to each individual house, because uh, we have a lot of seniors that live in our area, that will make it more handicapped accessible for them to get their mail. I see. And, and somebody asked if there were any other, um, I think it was Jonathan, if there are any other areas like this. I recall um, looking for an address to the east of Parole Town Center and in, in that community that basically um, lies east of Route 2 and I would say south of, of West Street. And I recall running into several streets that were like that, very similar. And now mm -hmm. that was probably about two years ago, whether they still exist like that or not, I could certainly uh, drive through there in the next few uh, weeks and look. Are you speaking of a community off of Solomon's Island Road just before Route 2, the route between Forest Drive and Route 2? Uh, Forest Drive and Route 2, Route 2 runs north to south, Forest Drive is east to west. So. It would be um, north of Aris T. Allen, I would say, um, and east of Route 2, south of West Street. So there's a Subaru dealer there, I think, and up over the hill in the, that back area. I, I saw a couple of streets up there. Oof. Now, that was, that was probably two years ago, and they may not exist like that now, but I can certainly look. I, I, I think they do. I think that's another good example. I, I'm not sure, um, Patrick, you can look because I was looking over there too, if that's in our area. Um, I, um, I, I didn't remember whether Route 2 was a, was a oh, maybe that's just for the Parole Town Center area. That yeah. Was, yeah, right. the Route 2 at Parole that's Town Center, not, not yeah. north of 50, south yeah, of 50. Yeah, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. and, and then it would be um, prior to Chinkapin. So it's a right. small area in there. Yeah, that's, that's an area right along the river is within the, it, is is part of the county and then closer to um forest drive aris t allen is is city yeah so i don't want to bring it up right now because i don't want to <laughs> i've got everything where i need to see it so sure. if i bring something else up it's i'm going to be knocked off of what i'm looking at so yeah but going back to kind of what troy just brought up is isn't this exactly what we're supposed to be kind of talking about and doing this and kind of elevating this saying that as part of this process that we should you know get that kind of input and look at areas like this and make mm -hmm. recommendations as it relates to not just zoning but in you know kind of the the public improvements that um, he was talking about and, and mm -hmm. being able to help preserve and enhance these kind of um, mm -hmm. these neighborhoods right. Well, right. To me, to me, it's also about equity because, I, you know, it's hard to imagine that that the county um, is not 
um, what would I want to say, um, embracing. Uh, and, and I know how difficult it is from what I've read in our community when we put in sewage out here in, a, in a, an area that's surrounded, uh, well, surrounded by water in the city uh -huh. uh, and barely connects to the county. Uh, but it was a, a difficult time to, to get sewage in. And that was done in 1993. And it should not be that hard these days. It just shouldn't be. Yeah, if, if I can point out too, I kept going back to this map because I wanted to be very clear where we are. So, so if this is the mall and the little strip mm -hmm. center, Parker Drive is the first drive uh, okay. to the east of that between, before you get to the Federal Navy credit union uh -huh. um and and to to also point out the parole town center master plan had well plan 2040 like, like i mentioned had recommended all of this area being can you all see my cursor yeah, I, uh -huh. yeah okay it had recommended all of this area be included in the parole town center uh master plan area so had applied a, a planned land use of town center to all of this area in discussions with the community, the Parole Town Center Master Plan recommended pulling out Gate Drive and Herndon Drive, but Parker Drive was, uh, at least in the Parole Town Center Master Plan, was um, th there was no recommended change to what Plan 2040 had recommended. So in other words, this would remain in the Parole Town Center. Now, no, there are no planned land use or zoning changes recommended with the Parole Town Center Master Plan. All of that is going to happen with this region plan update. So there'll be another um, opportunity to look at this area and and decide if this should be part of the um, more intensive Parole Town Center area, or does this need to revert to, um, I, I think in this case, it would be a a commercial land use for the bank and then one of the residential land uses for the Parker Drive area. Well, I know so, a, a lot of the uh, concerns is the property tax difference between the town center versus mm -hmm. a, a low density um, tax bracket. And I think that's what our community is trying to strive for. But what us, um, I mean, me personally, I never knew the process of how all that got determined, um, but that's what the concern was between Parker Drive and Gate Drive, because across the street, yep. the, the new community, and I understand they're underneath another jurisdiction, but they, that was a big question, why they wasn't included in the parole town center, they're just right across the street, but we found out, you know, they're underneath the, well, I guess the Severn Association, where they still consider a lower density tax bracket versus us being in the parole town center where we have a higher tax bracket, but how, um, you know, the residents there are in lower income versus across the street who are in mm -hmm. higher income. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me move, we have a couple of other areas to could to, i just could i'm sorry if i just go, go back ahead. because <clears throat> because sure. i think this is a, a really a very important um kind of discussion and example for us where if mm -hmm. you go back to those principles we're talking about economic vitality versus equity versus um you know kind of affordability that those things play out because you could see how land values would argue one thing in terms of the the higher density but you could see how you have an existing uh neighborhood that needs to kind of you know be be heard and be part of this process and how we think about this you know i think um and be able to kind of balance that i think it's going to be you know uh, pretty important for us in terms of going forward and i think that's really the part of the nexus of, of what you know what this group is all about point all right um jonathan if you're if you're still with us you had submitted uh, this area along Bay Ridge Avenue. Would you like to talk yeah. a little bit about your thoughts? Yeah, sure. yeah, sure. I mean, just coming up and down um, Bay Ridge Avenue, right? There's a number, and especially going towards Annapolis Neck, 
you can see like the CNC liquor. There's just a number of kind of small scale individual properties that are, you know, frankly, on a main on a main thoroughfare with plumbing, with electric that already have blacktop that, in my view, could be granted some sort of zoning relief to allow for affordable housing, office, uh, mixed use properties. The, the general idea here is, hey, let's, let's make use of the fact that the county's already spent significant infrastructure dollars um, and, you know, make it a nice place for either affordable housing for mixed use. And you can just see, you know, just, but and when you drive down, you know, unfortunately some of these areas have become pretty blighted. There's been fires in some of these properties. They've kind of become overrun um, with, with some petty crime and things. And unfortunately, I know that personally. So like the, these areas are ripe to have some zoning relief to maybe either encourage property sales or encourage other activity. Can I ask Jonathan? a question on that? Jonathan, sure. are, are they not occupied, these little buildings? Some are, some are not. Some are really just frankly vagrant um, open homes. That's where some fires have occurred. Um, mm -hmm. Some are not. Yeah, if, you, if you drive down there slowly, you can even pull into that CNC liver spot and just actually mm -hmm. walk in the back there and you'll see some un, untoward stuff going on. Mm -hmm. So this is in the area where Lytle is coming in and... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. So it's so it's pretty close to that already, and so that's kind of the point. You know, we already have this huge development coming in, huge infrastructure coming in. Right. Let's just go ahead and kind of consolidate it all, and just encourage. You know, we need affordable housing, we need mixed use, we need office. Let's not make everyone drive all the way out to the mall. And you already have that big shopping center, the massive shopping center across the street. So we might not need big, huge more retail, but we all know from this county we can use as much affordable housing as possible. And hey, let people live there and walk across the street to the grocery store. It's unfortunate Lily's not on here, but um, because she's she's very familiar with um, that because of the senior um, how what, what is it called the um, the senior like, house Bay what, Village. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, um, and then the newer one that's going in um, that includes the sale the sale building, right? Which is. Uh, in the purple, so across from um, Edgewood, and oh, there yeah. you go, and now they'll move north, um, northwest, right, right in that area is the sale, yeah, uh, sale building. That's going to be part of the uh, senior housing, and then that Bay Ridge um, or Bay Village Drive needs to extend northwest in order to provide access in yep. the rear for uh, first responders, fire and EMS and, mm -hmm. and law enforcement. And I think that there was an agreement um, that that would take place. And I apologize, I don't have the information handy or, or specifics, um, but that would help, I think, with what you're talking about. It, it would, the big conflict in the county, and I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with something called the adequate facilities legislation, but there is law, there's a reason why we have so much senior housing in Annapolis, right? It's not by chance. It's because the way that the current code works, if you build more than 11 residential units, there must be adequate facilities in terms of schools. And so a way to prevent, there's a reason why we don't get more apartment buildings and apartments built. It's because frankly, there's a refusal to build its schools larger. And so what do you do with a development property that can handle per typical zoning more humans, what do you do? You make it senior living. Right. And that's why we have so much senior living going on in this part of the county. So if we, if, we, if we do care about affordable housing, we need to grant some huge relief on the adequate facilities, or we just gotta build more schools in Annapolis, which we all know we need. But there's a real push against that as a way to hide growth. And, that, that's, and that's a fact, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I was going to put, I, I added this image um, to this presentation because I wanted to point out the um, jogging city county line in this area. Oh, yeah, as it's well. crazy, Pat. Could you comment on that? Because I don't think any yeah. of us in the investment real estate world understand what's going on. Yeah, so so the, the parcels that you see in orange here are all county parcels and everything in purple is city, um, city property. So the giant across the street, Bay Village, all of that is city. The um, the shopping center uh, here on on Hillsmere Drive is the city, 
And then the McDonald's and all of the blighted properties and where the libel is coming in is, is county property. Now the, the sort of um, smaller shopping center um, that we showed you in, a prior, in the prior picture here, this um, shopping center had come in during plan 2040 requesting a planned land use change really to, to extend the existing, um, I, th I think it's a commercial um, planned land use designation on the front part of this property and, and their request was to extend it to the full property, which, which was uh, granted through plan 2040. Um, so I, I'm not, I don't know if that means that there are plans for redevelopment of at least this property. We know a lot of this is, is in plans with, um, with the Lytle. Mm -hmm. um, the, city, the city's comprehensive plan recommends various areas at the periphery of the city boundaries for annexation. And this is one of those areas that they are looking at for potential annexation. And that, you know, that, that may, uh, that, that would bring all of this area under, under city jurisdiction. How does the um, county feel about that, Pat? Is that good for the county? Like, does the county want that to happen or not? Uh, I don't, I don't know that we have, uh, I don't know that we have a say in it. Um, okay. I'll be, I'll be honest. I'm not as familiar with how annexation works in Maryland as I'm familiar with South Carolina, where I'm from and, and even North Carolina. It, it's very different in every state, but I, like, I'm not, not just sure for these properties, but out by the mall and so forth. Like some zoning is actually better for the county than for the city. Mm -hmm. So if things in the mm -hmm. mall or if the city expands, you actually get pulled into some of that adequate facilities in some of those harder zoning requirements. Um, mm -hmm. So it's an interesting thing to think about for the county. Right. In, in that area, especially with all the um, uh, added senior housing and so on, especially as you go out Edgewood, uh, my understanding is that the city is having a hard time keeping up with um, EMS and fire um, support and therefore I believe at least they were contracting with the county because there were so many county runs out of uh, station eight, which is going down for the next slightly about, uh, you can almost see it in this, this photo. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is But, it, but right they here. were putting such, uh, such um, an impact on the county resources that at some point in time that the, the uh, county requested um, contract you know some kind of contract reimbursement but if this continues and the city continues to uh increase their um their areas and therefore their need for for first responders and if they're not doing something to augment that then the county is going to continue to have to support that and that gets us into the health area um, of our our concerns because that will so basically region a or station eight was for the neck and if it is going to have to respond to an increased city area, you know, there's a, a trade-off that makes the county residents suffer. That's my public service announcement, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, if we can move on this one more area to talk about quickly, and then it might be time for a quick, uh, a quick break, if that works for everybody. Um, this is one that um, an area, if you're familiar with Ridgely Avenue, just north of Bestgate Road, where it turns into Rao Boulevard, uh, and then to the north of, of 50 here, Ridgely Avenue actually extends over 50 and goes well through a little bit more county and then into the city. But this area is a real mixed bag of, of land use. Mm -hmm. You have larger, um, a couple of larger office buildings that were built, I'm not sure when, maybe in the 80s or so. Um, several smaller, you know, pro former homes that have been converted to small offices uh, along, the, along the way as well. Um, if you ever drive down this area, this is about as good a picture as I could get off of Google Street View, but you'll you kind of see what I'm talking about, the different scale of this office building versus some of the smaller and more traditional homes here. Um, 
like the, the planned land use, some of the planned land use was changed in this area during plan 2040. Um, and I'm, I, I think that this is an area that we're going to need to look at as a group to really think about what the future of this area is. And Kate, I know that you live in this area. Are you, are you still with us? And I don't know if you wanna add anything to what I'm saying here. Yeah, I live um, not far. I live over in Lindemore, which is down at the end of Ridgely and to the right between, um, between the Ridgely and the Severn River. And um, I think that a lot of the residential scale buildings are still lived in as residential. I think there are a couple of us, uh, my business is at um, 611 and 613, full disclosure. And um, so we are business. Uh, it, it had been a small business area when they, those houses were, and I don't know if P Patrick, maybe you can speak to, has that changed? Are we no longer small business? I mean, there was there was a, a, um, a classification for something between um, full scale commercial and and residential, and I don't know it, if that's these still. are all those are still um, low density resident. You you have a mix. It's low density residential and then commercial. Yeah. In those areas, planned so, in, in terms of planned land use. Yeah. A lot of the folks that live in Lindemore and around, I think, feel strongly that we keep the residential scale um, and keep it low density. And, um, you know, and there is, you know, an opportunity for small coffee shops, little things, you know, that could support the neighborhood in this area, I think. Um, I'm, I don't know what else you'd like to, I mean, I'm happy to, I, well, I, I know the area like the back of my hand. Yeah, so I, I would happy. simply, yeah, I would simply point out the area does not have sewer service right now. It is in the planned sewer service, or I'm sorry, future sewer service category. But that's, um, as we're looking at planned land use throughout the region, that's one of the things that we would consider. Yeah, we have a lot of um, cyclists, a lot of foot traffic. I think it's important as, a, as goals to maintain the walkability and the, um, again, that scale. I think you know, it's really sort of a travesty of what's happened historically through this area um, from the expansion of Route 50 in 1948. Um, the neighborhood sort of got blitzed. I don't know a lot about the history of the neighborhood, um, but I think that, you know, there used to be a ramp on ramp to Route 50 that's been closed in this area when they made more recent changes to Route 50. Um, houses have been moved around, shifted um, new streets. There's a street called New Willow there that was created about that time. I think it's sort of sad the way it's been handled through time. I mean, I, that's my opinion. But um, I did do a, a, a survey years ago, many years ago, before I knew I'd be involved here. Um, and actually a couple years ago, um, sort of looking at some of these historic properties, these are historic buildings. Um, and this road is a very historic road. Um, so turning it into best gate would be a really bad thing. <laughs> you know, I think the people in Annapolis don't want that. At least I hope they don't. Um, you know, down the hill, it goes down into West Annapolis. Mm -hmm. And um, I think this, I think, ooh, you know, I think, and I, so, so it's interesting in light of the conversation about Bestgate, uh, you know, a couple moments ago, because, you know, where is the boundary of where does it, where do we stop, you know, the parole uh, energy from, <laughs> from moving into the residential, you know, I think it's, I think the people in this area really feel strongly to, to prevent that from happening. We've seen a lot of us have been here for years and have seen what Bestgate used to be. You know, it used to be a small two lane road like Ridgely. And uh, so anyway, those are my full disclosure thoughts about that there really are, like I said, a lot of historic buildings tucked in and around. Some have been, you know, they're not all in the greatest of uh, care. I don't think that, um, we could say it's a clean his national register historic district or anything, but there's still a lot of history to be respected here. And I think some of it is more landscape uh, oriented than, um, than built as well. So 
patients. I'm really surprised with the medical um, building being there that at least sidewalk for you know, um, mobility access. Yeah, there are a lot of limitations that way. That's true. There, it's but people are plowing through anyway. <laughs> you know, they they uh, go into the road with their cycles if they have to. There's a wide berm on the, and and that I just think some of these buildings there are a couple others, not just the one you see on your right. There's one on your left, further down, mm -hmm. and um, I think there's another one in there that they just I don't know how they were ever approved in the 80s and, and early 90s. But they just really, again, they're part of that, not only Route 50, but that uh, they're part of what, my gosh, what they did to this neighborhood. So anyway, that's, there you have my view. Thank you. When, very I, much. when I first moved back to this community and I was driving out there, it was, it was primarily a diagnostic center there, um, and it maybe still is. Mm -hmm. um, my assumption, having worked in healthcare in Colorado and in especially trauma care, my assumption was that it was probably going to continue to increase and have more medical oriented facilities there, uh, which could really, um, I'm sorry, the phone's ringing, I can't reach it, um, which could really, um, if that were to happen, overcome the, um, you know, the roadway very quickly. But I enjoy that road, uh, and I'm so sorry, the phone's ringing. I enjoy that roadway. In fact, um, Anytime I have an opportunity to go that way, it's, it's a peaceful road. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, the, you know, it's just, it's a nice drive. And I would hate to see it become best gate too. Thank you, Linda. Uh -huh. I agree. And I think, I think there are medical offices in the, in this, like our office is, is medically oriented and um, at 611 and 613. So there, there definitely is sort of a medical and an alternate, uh, well, I wouldn't use the word alternative, but I'd say complementary medicine world popping along. We joke about how Ridgely Avenue has a lot, it's like an access for, for, mm -hmm. uh, for holistic opportunities. And, and thank you for getting that. I really do. I don't know how you put it into words, but that serenity and there's a, it's a sense of place, if you will, that that old road uh, carries. And so how we work around the road itself, I think is huge. Thanks. Sorry, I keep popping in. Okay. That's all right. Um, at this point, so it's it's a little bit after 11 right now, and I was going to recommend that we take a three, three, four minute break um, and then come back. And I'd like to get into the public involvement plan that was shared with you all. Uh, does that does that work for you all? And Tony has had to sign off. Um, so Leo is going to take on the the chair role for the rest of the meeting. So Leo, does that, does that sound like a plan if we maybe meet back at 11.15? Yeah, it's 11.11 11 now on my calendar. Um, let's give people just a bit more time um, to get a break and get a cup of coffee and we'll get right back at it. And um, so let's say, uh, let's say 11.18, we'll be ready to go. Okay, all right, we'll be back then. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks.
was moving. Okay. I've just restarted the recording. So um, hope everybody got the caffeine that they need. And um, what I will do now is um, I had a couple of slides in the, in the presentation related to this public involvement plan, but I think instead of going back to that, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, what I would really like to do is, is go through, um, I, I hope that everybody has had a chance to look at that, um, the public involvement plan that we sent out uh, at the end of last week. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about that with you all. Um, the draft public involvement plan, it focuses on a, a framework for the outreach that we, you know, here at the county want to try to undertake during this region plan process. And um, it will allow you all as the SAC members to see how and where any of your own outreach efforts can, can help fill in. So let me, give me a second to share my screen again. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I would like to do is uh, really just walk through some of the main pieces of this. And um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, trying to get my screens set up here. I can't see anybody's, uh, I can't see the participants. There we are, okay. If anybody raises a hand, it might, it might be easier for me if, if you have questions as we go through, if you'll just speak up. Um, so this, this plan though, it combines the, the major outreach efforts with the overall schedule for the region plan process, including all the SAC meetings and the, the big um, public outreach events that we're, that we're looking to do. I, I will say this is a living draft. And so this is gonna evolve a bit as we move through the process, just depending on, our, on, on the opportunities that come up and the resources that we have available to, to put toward them. So um, looking at this, um, it starts off with really what are the goals of our, of our outreach? Our guiding principles, I would recommend that we make the changes that were just made in the charter um, and put those same changes here under, under these principles. Um, hey, Pat Patrick, can yes. You, can you zoom in a little bit to make it bigger for the see. font larger? Thank you. Is that better? Yes. More reasonable for people to read. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, and you all pipe up if, if there are any questions or, or comments that you have as we move through. Um, so there is a summary of some of the, some of the major um, recent political, uh, previous community input that we've, that we've had. So through our plan 2040, various sessions there, there was a lot of public input with the parole town center master plan and also the parole mobility study that fed into that master plan. So there's a summary of input if you all are interested in looking at that. We're going to hear as we move through this process from different agencies in the county. These are some of the key agencies, transportation, public works, rec and parks, and the others. Um, we're gonna hear from them about some of the, the work that they do, their staff concerns and, and what they're hearing from citizens. And then also we've always talked about uh, the city of Annapolis and how important they are to be coordinated, for, for us to be coordinated with what they're working on in the city. And as we've mentioned, they're going through their comprehensive plan process now and there's a whole lot of public outreach that they have done that they'll be able to talk to as we go through this process. Um, I did include a link to their comprehensive plan page. There are several other plans that the city has recently undertaken. There's an Eastport Forest Drive sector study, an uh, Outer West Street sector study. Um, there are others in recent years as well. Um, the, the comprehensive plan is, is the, the current one that they're working on. And, and that is a citywide plan that ideally would, would uh, capture a lot of the, the 
goals and policies that were set in some of these other smaller sector plans. So that's why I listed just the comprehensive plan here. Um, there is a general list of some of the key stakeholders that we want to try to hit as we're moving through this process. So, um, so really a, getting at this idea of a range of voices that we want to, that we want to hear from. This is where I want to spend a little bit of time going through this with you all, because I, I've always thought that this is really important that you all see the big picture uh, as we move through the process, where we're at now and where we're going. So um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time going through this public involvement timeline and tactics, because it does include all of the SAC meetings and, and, uh, the, the, and how the input that we're getting from the public will interface with that. And then the comprehensive rezoning process that will happen toward the end of the, of the planning process. Um, this overall timeline does get us to a point where we have a region plan and that's the, the end result is gonna be a document that looks a lot like plan 2040 in that it'll be a policy document with goals and policies. There will be a planned land use map that will be an amendment to that uh, planned land use map of plan 2040. And we are getting into zoning recommendations through the comprehensive rezoning process uh, with this region plan. So I'll talk a little bit about that. But overall, um, the schedule is, if you really think about it, just in very simplistic terms, there are three main phases. And you, any planning process, you first start with asking, where are we now? And then where do we want to be? And how do we get there? If you just think about those three broad phases, we're in the process right now of asking, where are we now? We're getting ready to get into looking at what are the existing conditions? What is some of the planning work that has already been done? And as we're going through this, um, you'll see that the next uh, several meetings with you all are meetings that um, we have, we have different agencies from the county and, and even the city that will talk to us about the work that they do as it relates to land use. That's uh, giving us some of the existing conditions um, in various topics over the next uh, several months. And then where do we wanna be? As a group, we're gonna set uh, a 20 year vision for the region to, to set a course for wh what do we want the vision of this region to be in, in 20 years. And then we're gonna set goals and, and such to um, help align with that vision. And then that third phase of, of how do we get there, that's where we outline policies and strategies to, uh, <clears throat> to help uh, to help meet the vision that we established for the for the region. Um, we'll be also looking at zoning as a as a key tool and then recommending other key tools that will impact the the land use and help prioritize um, some of the the investments that need to happen in all of these these various topical areas that we will talk about in the next couple of months, the next several months here. So, so that's, in a nutshell, the overall schedule. Um, you'll see the next, um, we, we're here in March uh, with, with uh, this meeting that we're having now. So if we look to April, we are planning a all regions community forum on the 20th, where um, we're gonna be there to answer questions from the, the public about what the region plans are about and um, we will start to gather some feedback from, from residents um, that will help us inform what the vision of this region should, should be. Um, if I back up just a little bit, so we've had a survey or a questionnaire that was opened um, in the middle of December that we just closed at the end of last week. So we already have some data that has come in um, in the terms of in the in the way of public input 
that um, Desiree and I have not had a chance to analyze that beyond, I just saw that we had 101 responses to that initial uh, questionnaire. So we'll be coming through that data and sharing that with you all in the next week or two here. Um, we are starting with um, some of these stakeholder interviews. We have a meeting, there's a meeting this Thursday with the Annapolis area community of hope where we want to um, begin to hear from them and understand what some of the needs are from their perspective. And um, let's see, co uh, community forum on April 20th. Our April 26th meeting is where we begin our topical meetings. And that's um, our economy and public facilities uh, agencies, um, the Economic Development Corporation, um, Office of Emergency Management, Police and Fire, and I think schools will also be uh, at our April meeting to give us a presentation and to um, allow for some time for you all to ask questions about, about what they're planning and um, for, the, for the future of this region. Um, in the next week or two, we're gonna be sending out some background information from Plan 2040 and then any other um, information that they have prepared since Plan 2040 was put together. We will share that out with you all as background information ahead of this meeting so that you all can have a look at that and be ready to, to discuss and ask questions in the April meeting. But in general, that's how these, these next several months are going to look. We will have uh, various meetings and, and presentations with, uh, with different agencies who will come and talk about the work that they are doing. and and have you all ask questions. So um, starting, so, th so that starts in April and then May through September will be our remaining topical meetings. We will uh, meet with the Office of Transportation and we're looking to invite the city um, transportation folks as well to at least one of our two transportation meetings in either May or June and uh, begin to hear from them. Um, at each of these, like I said, the agency will present at the meeting and then following each of these topical meetings um, from May through September, we will take the information that we've been given and, and some of what we're hearing from the public in our outreach. And we'll start just to draft some of the broad goals and policies as they relate to these different topics. Um, so that's happening May through, uh, through September. We do have several other surveys and uh, questionnaires that we are looking to open during that time frame. Uh, beginning in the October time frame, you'll see our SAC meeting at that point is focused on visioning. And so after we've gotten our input uh, or our presentations from all of the different agencies and the topics, um, the various topics that, that go into this planning effort, we will work together to set a, a vision, a 20 year vision statement for the, for the region. And then we'll move into um, refining and, and finalizing the goals, policies and strategies for a couple of sessions through uh, December. Um, now these will be, I, I would see these as really a refinement of the goals and policies and strategies that are established in Plan 2040. We want to kind of take those and figure out how to, how to really implement them at the region level. How do we fine tune and, and make them a little bit more specific to the region? Um, when we get into January, we should have a a draft of those goals, policies, and strategies that we can share out with the public for, for input on, on those. Um, we are looking to have a potential workshop with you all uh, in January. And I've put two dates in here. One would be our regular, well, one would be a Tuesday meeting date. It's not the fourth Tuesday. It's, I believe, the second Tuesday or a Saturday date. So this would be an opportunity. It's kind of a placeholder right now, but it, could, it would be an opportunity for us to um, focus on a special topic that, 
perhaps through all of our prior work, we've determined that there needs some, some focus on a particular topic. So it could be a charrette that we, that we look at a particular geographic area and really figure out what does the future of that area need to look like. Maybe it's something that's focused on housing or sea level rise or some other topic that's particularly relevant to the region that needs, um, that needs a special session uh, among us on the SAC. Um, and then, so, so following all of that, we in late January, we would look to get into working through our planned land use and our zoning. Now, as I've mentioned before, uh, plan 2040 set, uh, did a, a lot of planned land use analysis and the um, intent was always that the region plan would refine that planned land use for the, for the region. So we're going to take another look at the, what's called the development policy areas as they're applied throughout the region and then the planned land use um, for the county. And we're gonna develop a draft uh, planned land use map for the, for the region. Um, and then from that, we will also develop our recommended zoning map for the region. And the idea is that we would do that through February and then in March, the March timeframe, we would put that out to the public uh, for public review. And while it's out to the public, we would open a comprehensive zoning application window. That's where property owners can submit an application to change the zoning on their property. And our uh, intent was to put out the SAC recommended planned land use map and, and recommended zoning map um, before asking for the uh, applications from property owners in order for them to see the recommendations first because we've, we've noticed a lot of times with uh, the planned land use for plan 2040, a lot of the recommended planned land use was um, the, these were, the staff recommended a, a land use that did not um, then need to be changed by, by, the, uh, by the property owner. In other words, the property owner wanted a particular change that, um, that the CAC at that time and the staff was already going to recommend. So to kind of cut out that step, we would put out our recommended plan land use and zoning maps and then have the public look at them and property owners can submit uh, applications to change if they would like to at that point. Um, that process we anticipate would wrap up by May and um, we would have a final review among you all, the SAC, of any changes to, to those recommended plain land use and zoning maps based on the applications that we've received. So you all are going to actually look at those applications and make any uh, recommendations that you all would would like to see. Um, and then a final, a final look at the full draft plan, including all of the text, all of the, the vision, the goals, policies, strategies, all of the text and the planned land use and zoning maps that we're anticipating for the May timeframe. And we would put that out in June, July for public review and comment. And um, a final review with you all of the full plan in July before we begin the legislative process in August and going through really the, the end of next year as the plan makes its way through the planning advisory board and the county council. Um, so that's a, a very quick walk through that overall schedule. The remainder of the, the plan um, sort of details some of the potential engagement strategies for different um, the different voices that we're hoping to bring into this plan and make sure that they're heard um, as we go through this process. Uh, the draft public review and comment phases, this, this really just pulls out and summarizes some of the major milestones in public review that we're looking to hit as we go through. But th this is in that schedule that you see above. And then there's a bit more about online engagement, the different types of engagement that we'll look to employ and then reporting on how, how we plan to report on the public involvement and what we're hearing from, uh, from the public as we move through the process. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now so that I can actually see you all. I see that we have two, 
two chats. Um, a quick, a quick message from Kristen on a correction, and thank you. We will make that correction. My mistake. I uh, I just wrote it to Kristen. I didn't realize that I, I was just typing the chat box. I didn't realize it was <laughs> restricted to Kristen. So sorry, Kristen. Thank you so much for forwarding that. No problem. That was very rapid fire, and I feel like. Um, does this make sense to everybody? Does anybody have, do you all have comments, questions, thoughts on, on this? Is this helpful to get a sense for the overall picture of what we're doing, the overall process? Patrick, I think it's very helpful. This was what I um, had asked about when we initially met and this lays everything out in, in clear and concise dates. So thank you. Good. Thank you. Sorry, I had to leave. I'm back. What I like about this process is the time frame that has given folks to respond from the public. Uh, I think, um, oh, geez, I'm sorry. The gentleman's name earlier, well as I know him, I can't think of his name. He lives in Bestgate Road. Don't, don't kill me, bro. Troy. Hi, Troy. Yep. <laughs> as he said earlier, being included in the process early on, by the time people had in the past, the train left the station and they had started building bricks. So this is a very great opportunity uh, for people to have input. I like this process that you know, you're going through. Patrick, could you just comment a little bit about how this is different from Plan 240 in case we get questions from any of our contacts about this? Um, it's really there was a whole public comment period, if I'm not mistaken, for that like two years ago or a year ago. Yeah, it's very similar to the process that was used for Plan 2040. And like I said, all... All of our planning efforts, any planning effort really has that broad three phase process of where are we, where do we want to go and how do we get there. And so it, it looks very much like that we have, I think we did learn a lot as we moved through plan 2040 about some of the um, Some of the in, the ways that we got input and what worked and what didn't what was what was useful and what was not so I think this. Um, this represents some of those lessons learned. Um, one of them being, I know that when we put out the draft of, well, it wasn't the full draft of Plan 2040. It was, um, th there was a point where we put out the planned land use map, all of the goals, policies, and strategies, and um, several, I think all of the, all of the um, requested planned land use changes, all of the applications that we'd re received, we had put, with Plan 2040, we had put all of that out to the public for comment at once, and it was really too much in, in one big gulp to kind of put out to the public and ask them to digest in one go. So we've broken that up at several stages here so that we're going to put pieces of this plan out in, in smaller pieces to hopefully make it a little bit more digestible for the average person to to engage with and comment on as we're moving through. So that's that's one example of of how we've tweaked what we did with plan 2040. And Does that answer your question? I was going to it just helps. I was going to add on to Patrick um, just in terms of some of the diff general differences between plan 2040 and the region plan itself during the plan 2040 process we also kicked some of these land use decisions down the road to the region plan process to essentially take a deeper look and get more community input at a specific region scale on what these decisions should be um, like ridgely avenue being one of those areas that we wanted to take a deeper look at and decide get more targeted you know input from that community on what if these land use changes, what these land use changes should look like. And then another important component is that plan 2040 didn't include zoning changes. It only included land use, um, plan land use changes. So the region plan process will include that zoning piece as well. So this will actually, we'll look at the plan land use map and make recommendations on, on a specific, on the specific region scale, and then also update the zoning as well. So. Okay, the zoning can obviously be complex, Desiree. So I know, speaking for myself, I would love almost like a tutorial, or even if you just want to record, frankly, a video I can watch on my own that says, hey, here's what the zoning is now, here's what we're thinking, and here's why, because the zoning can get very complex. It, it does. It, and, and we're going to be, that, that's where we're going to be 
doing a deep dive into that toward the end of the process in the January, February timeframe. Okay. Mm -hmm. As you hold the community meetings, will we be invited so that we can hear their feedback? Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, yes, we would like to have you there. And will those be live or Zoomed or what would they be? We, um, we don't have, uh, so the, we've only planned as far as the, the forum in April. That one is going to be a virtual um, meeting um, for, for people to, to engage that way. We haven't planned out what, our, what the format's going to be for the other engagements yet. We will flesh that out as we move forward. Uh, have you talked about maybe having the city have someone represent them on our committee so they can hear the same things that we are talking about so that we won't have to wait until May or June to hear from them? Um, we, yeah, we could, um, I can reach out to the city. We, I don't think we can have an official, like another um, official member of the SAC because we're limited to 15 by, by the uh, bill that was passed by the council. But um, I, we have been, Desiree and I have met with, the, with Eric Lashinsky, who is the, um, the planner, the uh, long range planner for the comprehensive planner for the city. And um, we can ask him if he'd like to attend all of our meetings, but we did talk to him about um, having at least the one meeting in September that was dedicated to uh, understanding the, the various city efforts so that we can coordinate with them. And we had talked to him about having him um, come and participate and present as well in, with our land use and transportation meetings back in uh, that are coming up in, uh, what is that, May and June, I believe? Yeah. Yeah, but I, we can talk to him about if they would like to participate as we move along as well. Theo, you're muted. Thank you. Patrick, I just wanted to add a comment. Um, we've been through just a little bit of this before you and I with um, these groups coming in to talk to, the, to uh, the committee. And I just wanted to let people know, these are incredibly informative because you know the, all the hard work that Patrick and Desiree put together to be prepared for these meetings. Well, you'll find um, the same level of commitment from transportation and education and questions about um, adequate public facilities and how that's measured and where there's problems and where there's not maybe such a big problem. Those things um, are, we'll, we'll drill down pretty good at those presentations. So I encourage you to, um, to uh, make every effort to be at those because they're so helpful. So as, as part of that, I think that that's gonna be really helpful. Will we get, and maybe it'll be part of the learning session with public works to understand kind of the, how the county's thinking about its future investments in terms of the capital improvement plans and capital facility plans. So, okay, that'll be, that'll be yeah. helpful. Yeah, what we found in the past is they, they kind of have a plan in place themselves now and, and they're educating us about what their thinking is. And, right. What starts to become apparent is the, the overlap from all of these things. You know, we're looking at this right now in pretty broad terms because, you know, it's just kind of what people are interested in and like the driving tour tells us a little bit, but um, those presentations start to tie this kind of web together of where we can really start to focus some effort to, you know, impact change that's helpful. Yeah, but where the county's thinking of investing its money, that's that usually is a is, is a big driver of, of where they want to go, and and hopefully it's consistent with what we're thinking about, or maybe it won't be. And we'll have yeah, to like for instance, there. Public Works has facilities that they're thinking about either upgrading or abandoning or putting new ones in place, and and you'll see where all of that is happening. Does that sound right to you, Patrick? I think so. Yeah, yeah. And it is kind of, Leo, you had, you had described it from your previous experience as kind of a fire hose of information. And so I, yeah, it, it, it may feel like that at times. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking really starting in April because 
we're doing covering um, economic development and then the various public facilities. That's a number of agencies who are all going to come and and um, give very quick presentations. And um, we may have an abbreviated question and answer period and have to take some some questions offline and get answers to you offline. But at any rate, this is the um, this gives you the overall schedule that we've that we've tried to work out um, to, to get the information that you all need to be able to to fulfill your role as advisory in this in this process and really advise on um, what the priorities need to be for this region and what the land use and zoning and the future of this region needs to be. So hopefully um, this will be something that works for you and gets us to a to an end product by the end of, of next year. I have a question. Sure. Um, and this may relate to what Jonathan asked a minute ago, and I might not have heard it so well. I'm curious with these meetings, does the information flow upward or is it, it's their presentation to us? And do they, do they have an incentive to incorporate ideas from us? I think they do, and I think they're receptive to the types of, um, the, <laughs> excuse me, the kind of um, feedback that you all are hearing. So, so you all represent different different areas in the region, and maybe your community. Um, there's a particular issue that needs that really needs to be addressed, and it's it is an opportunity to share that. Um, when we went through the plan 2040 process and I anticipate doing it this way uh, through this process, when we put out our questionnaires and our surveys to the public, we, we would get a lot of very specific comments, you know, transport that are important for either DPW or transportation that we would forward to them and share with them. So we, we share the input that we get with them so that they can incorporate that or, or address it as, as they um, as they need to, but yeah, you, as we after we listen to these agency presentations, these topical presentations, we are going to begin the process of of drafting goals and policies for the region, and um, and we are going to continue working with the agencies to uh, to get their buy into this plan as well. So it is a, a conversation, and it's going to be a messy kind of conversation. It's not going to be an easy linear thing because we're going to have to revisit it after the end of all of these topical and we'll, we'll revisit the goals and policies that we've started to draft. Um, but there is a conversation with the agencies, yes, as we move through this process. Does that make sense or answer your question? That helps. Thank you so much. Uh, Patrick, may I make a comment? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Tony uh, for suggesting that uh, someone or a representative from the um, city of Annapolis uh, join in our, um, in our group on a, on a regular basis. Um, uh, maybe some of you are aware and maybe you're not, but along the Forest Drive corridor, um, I'm down in the Annapolis Neck area. There is a very, very large um, construction project that's, that's going on on Annapolis Neck Road area. A residential. Um, they're building townhomes and I do believe condominiums, which is going to affect the traffic tremendously. As it stands right now, there's one way in Annapolis Neck and one way out. I'm not sure what the plan is as far as um, alleviating some of the traffic, because with that many, um, that much of a construction and that large of a project, that's going to generate a lot more traffic in the area. And so I'm kind of concerned about that. And uh, being that this is a city, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a city owned uh, project, uh, they need to be at the table where they can uh, give their input and we can uh, make some suggestions to them. So that's that's my take on that. And um, we we had talked about that area. You had submitted some images that we that we discussed at the at the uh, February meeting as well, so we appreciate that, but that's yes, just I'm sorry everybody. I wasn't there. Yeah, but just to remind everybody, that's that's that area that we had talked about near Quiet Waters Park. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. So Patrick, at this point, um, it looks like we've run through the agenda and um, just a couple closing things. I'll, I know uh, Tony's back, but- um, Come on, carry on. <laughs> So our next meeting is the 26th. Is that what I have in my notes here, Patrick? Yeah. Desiree? If, if you'd like, I can um, I can share my screen and kind of wind down with these um, reminders. Does that does that work for you, Leo? It does. Okay. Um, yeah. So as I, as I mentioned before, we have April 20th. We have the public forum. It's going to be virtual for. And it's going to be for all three of the regions at once. So the idea is just to really let residents know what these region plans are about and to start to get some input from residents and answer any questions they have about this, this uh, process. Because we are trying to stay aligned across the three regions. So it's a very similar process in regions two and four as what we're doing here in seven, with the big caveat of we're trying to coordinate with the city. So that's a big difference for us. Um, yeah, April 26th is our next meeting. And, and then the meeting following that, we will be getting into transportation and land use um, in May. We do have a feedback map out. Let me skip this slide. Um, I was gonna point this out to you. If you look at our region hub, that's aacounty.org slash region seven, there is a new feedback map that was launched last week where people can actually zoom into this map, they click the comment function here, and then they, they can add a geo-referenced comment as you see um, in this screenshot here, a lot of people have already started doing that. Um, and some of the comments are within the city, that's fine, we will share that with the city. But um, that's, uh, that's something that's out there now, so please share that with your networks as we as we move through this. This is gonna be open, um, Desiree, how long are we? June 9th. Oh, it's right there on the screen, June 9th, yep. Thank you. And that's, that's it, just for the record, I'll put this up there. We do have our dedicated uh, email addresses and region7 at aacounty.org for anybody that wants to send any comments to us. Again, our hub site, um, aacounty.org slash region seven. Just one more thing on the feedback maps too. We have um, in-person versions of those feedback maps also in all three libraries in the region too. So if anyone wants to participate in person, um, you can go to any one of the libraries in, in the region. Thanks for saying that, we appreciate it. So, so with that, um, thanks again to everyone for, uh, for making time to go through this with us today. It's, it's exciting. It's, I'm starting to build more and more momentum as we get past this early stage. So things are gonna start to happen more quickly. But um, I think at this point, um, I'm gonna make a, a recommendation that we have a motion to adjourn. Move that we adjourn, Tony. Second. We have a second, we have a second. second. Great. Great. Well, thanks again, everyone. Have a great uh, rest of your week, and we'll look forward to seeing everybody on the 26th and those that can make the, uh, the public forum on the 20th. Um, encourage you to do so. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Desiree. Bye, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, committee. Thanks, guys. Take care. Good Bye -bye. afternoon. Bye-bye.